2014 marks the 50th anniversary of Syracuse University's graduate program in Renaissance art. This year's class of grad students have chosen a particularly intriguing theme for their final research project, entitled Behind the Fig Leaf, Erotic Visual Culture in Renaissance Italy. They will present the results of their research at a public symposium held at our Florence campus on December 4th. Here are the grad students describing their individual projects. Uh, so for my symposium presentation, I wanted to look into same-sex dynamics in the Renaissance and how they were perceived. Um, and I immediately thought of Benvenuto Cellini when I was thinking of an artist to research for this. He was really kind of the bad boy of the 16th century, you could say. Um, he was known to have sexual relations with both women and men, and that was really well known even in his lifetime. Um, so I decided to focus on his marble sculpture of Apollo and Hyacinth, which um, tells the homoerotic story of the god Apollo and um, the, the beautiful youth Hyacinth. And what I discovered through my research is not only is this sculpture autobiographical in quality, um, but it also expresses these very complex um, artistic theories of the 16th century humanist Benedetto Varchi. Uh, so what I think my research really brings to the table is um, not only was the erotic in the Renaissance appreciated aesthetically, but it also um, could express these very complex artistic theories which were being developed at the time. In my research for the symposium, I will be taking a closer look at the partridge in Titian's Venus with Cupid and Partridge, now in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, in order to try and understand further why this bird appears in the painting of a reclining nude. Animals were sometimes included in these scenes as indicators of the erotic to period viewers in the 16th century. During the Renaissance, birds were considered very lusty and lascivious creatures. What I have discovered in my research is that there existed in the 16th century a very rich bird-related vocabulary that used various bird names to refer to the penis and also various bird-related terms to refer to the act of sexual intercourse. I think evidence suggests that Titian and his patrons included the partridge in this scene as a way to enhance the erotic nature of the painting. My symposium presentation is on a small heated bath in Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome, which has uh, beautiful decorations, but they've been little studied in recent years, especially in terms of their erotic decorations. So imagine you're inside Castel Sant'Angelo and you enter this small bath, which has frescoes of empty thrones on the walls. Uh, these empty thrones have attributes of various gods, such as Jupiter, Apollo, and Mercury, just to name a few. Uh, also resting on the thrones are draperies, as if the gods had flung off their clothes and gone to bathe with the patron of this bath. But who is this patron? He must be a pretty important guy to, to be bathing with such illustrious gods. Uh, so you go back to the entrance and you look at the inscription above the door, which gives you the answer. Clement VII de Medici, a pope. So a pope has stripped and is bathing with these pagan gods. That's a pretty racy concept um, for the leader of Western Christendom. So in my symposium presentation, I want to answer why Clement included these images and what messages he was trying to send with them. When we think of the relationship between the erotic and dining, we think of foods such as chocolate, which we believe to be an aphrodisiac. Now I'm not looking at chocolate. Instead, I'm studying Isabella d'Este's beautiful Maiolica service. Isabella was an extraordinary and famous art collector um, and patron who ruled in the princely court of Mantua. Today, there remain 23 plates of this Maiolica service, which was painted by Nicola da Urbino and given to her by her daughter, Eleonora Gonzaga. Each plate is meticulously painted with a narrative scene from a literary source and decorated with Isabella's personal devices. What is striking about the service is that there's a significant number of plates that fall under the theme of the pursuit of love, displaying the passions and desires of both gods and mortals. If we imagine these being used for a banquet uh, by Isabella, they would have served to stimulate conversation and also to entertain guests. These suggestive images indicate that the erotic played an important role in Isabella's artistic patronage.